Good morning, Calvary. Welcome to church. Uh, once again, we're doing our live streaming today, and uh, it's a little different, and uh, we're getting used to it. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we are certainly glad that you have invited us into your homes for church today. And you know, we've been doing a series on worship, and today we are going to mix things up quite a bit. And uh, even though it's already mixed up because we're doing it live streaming, but uh, this message is about corporate worship. And it's, we've been talking about worship for the past two weeks all along here, and we started out with our definition of worship. And I, you know, before we actually go with what we've put out as our definition, I would like to just say, I believe if you talk to most people, when you say the word worship to them, the first thing that's going to come to their mind is singing, and that that's what they think of when they think of worship. I am hoping that over the past two weeks, you have learned that worship is so much more than just singing. Singing is certainly a huge part of it, but it is so much more than worshiping through song. And, you know, we started out with this verse, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. It comes from the inside. And we use the definition to pay homage to or literally to ascribe worth to some person or thing, to ascribe worth to some person or thing. And we talked about what is God worth to us? What is God worth to us? For what he has done, for what he will do, and for who he is. What is God worth to you? Well, we are obviously a little different in the fact that we are all here on this stage together, and we're going to be doing things just a little different than what we've done in the past. Um, we are going to be singing all throughout this message, so I want to encourage you that every time we are worshiping in song, that as you are with your family, go ahead and stand up and sing and worship and give it your all and worship God with your whole heart. I'm going to start out the message today or the service today by reading Psalm chapter 95, verses 1 through 7, and then we're going to go right into some singing. Psalm 95, verse 1 says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God a great king above all gods. He holds his hands, the depths of the earth, and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. Join us as we sing the song, Canons. It's falling from the clouds, a strange and lovely sound. I hear it in the thunder and the rain. It's ringing in the skies like cannons in the night. The music of the universe plays. We're singing, you are holy. Galaxies reaching far beyond the Milky Way. 
Come join us with the sound. Come on, let's sing it out as the music of the universe plays. We're singing, You are holy, great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are. And I'm so my heart will sing of how great you are. What is God worth to you? What is your worship to God? You know, um, worship in a corporate setting, is, as we go through this message today, you're going to see how important that worship is. You're going to see just how important it is that we gather together to do this. And no, I know it's a little different that we are gathering together via the internet and live streaming in different platforms, but we are still together. We are together in spirit and in truth, which is the way it should be. You know, when we watch a movie, if you're watching a good movie, there is nothing worse than a movie getting broken up. You know, like when we watch movies at home all the time and when you're watching the movie and, and somebody comes down and they want to talk to you and you have to pause it and then, you, and then maybe you decide you need a stack and you got to pause it or maybe you got to go to the bathroom and then you got to pause it. There's nothing worse than losing the track of what's going on in that movie because we keep pausing it. And there's a lot to be said about our worship not getting paused and making sure that we have this, this flow of worship you know, as we get together and worship corporately, our goal is to bring ourselves into the presence of God in such a way that we are not only showing him his worth, but that he can speak to our hearts and that he can really get down right into the heart of it all. And Ephesians 5.19 says this, it says, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. I'm going to read that again singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Do you see that? There's, a, there's a, a bind there. We're doing it among ourselves so that we're together corporately, but it's something that takes place in our own hearts. So even though it's a corporate worship, there's still a personal side of the worship that happens. And, you know, there's a song that was written back in 1999. Uh, it's a pretty popular worship song that, that's been sung, obviously, for many years. And it's a song that if we start talking about worship, I think it has to be part of our conversation because of why the song was written. Matt Redman, at his church that he attended, they were actually having some problems with worship. 
And what was happening is people were complaining about how the styles of worship and, and what was going on during worship and was it a performance? And, and there was all kinds of issues happening around worship as far as singing and the music goes. And the pastor of that church, I think very wisely decided, you know what? We're going to stop and we're going to take a break from doing worship in that way. And they took music out of their worship and they didn't have it for a while. And when it came back into the time to have that song, Matt Redman wrote a song that was specifically designed to talk about getting back to the heart of worship. And you know, he has a quote, and it says, something happens when the people of God gather together and play out the praises of God in the presence of God. And that's a true statement. Something happens when we gather together and we play out the praises of God in the presence of God. And this flow of worship is such an important thing that happens. We're going to make some changes. The next time we do get to get back together again, first of all, the talking outside in the lobby, which is wonderful, and I love the fact that we greet each other and we love each other and we have this time of fellowship together, and I don't want that to stop. But normally what happens is we keep it going out there until we hear the first song, and then we decide, okay, maybe we should start to make our way in. Well, we're going to change a little bit of the order of worship and how it happens here, and we're going to actually have our announcements and everything right up front, and then we're going to start with a worship song, and we're going to start coming into the presence of God right away. So you're going to want to get out of the lobby and get inside here as soon as you possibly can so that you can join us as we move into the presence of God together, because something happens when we come into the presence of God together and play out our praises to God. So be prepared when you do come back here to this building, that's going to be a change you're going to see. We're also going to make another change. We're going to take and let our kids have worship that's appropriate to them. You know what? We have age-appropriate toilets, so I believe we should have age-appropriate worship. And so what we're going to be doing is, for kids up through third grade, they're going to actually start right away. At the very beginning, you're going to drop your kids off before the service starts and they're going to have their own time of worship, full, complete worship service with music and teaching and, and small groups getting together. And that is going to be something that is so cool and so exciting for them. That's going to start May 31st, May 31st. So put that on your calendar. And then I said this last week when we talked about serving being part of our personal worship, we're going to need some help with that. So you need to get a hold of Miss Laurie if you are interested in helping with that. You just need one Sunday a month where you will be with our kids, leading them in age-appropriate worship. Therefore, the parents won't have to press pause, leave the worship service, then have to come back and get back into the flow of worship. They're going to be able to have their own moment of a flow of worship. And you know, when I saw how important this was, it was when I was way back in the very beginning of one of the sermon series I was doing. And if you remember, I was sitting on a stool right there, and we had the lights go out. Boom, lights went out. Well, when the lights went out, it was a little comical to me and almost a little distracting. I could see a whole lot of kids' faces because they were on an iPad or on an iPhone playing games or doing stuff, watch, and I could see their faces because as soon as the lights went out, their faces were illuminated. They need age-appropriate worship where they can come into the presence of God in their own way because coming into the presence of God in our own way is important. So, Children's Church, May 31st. Up through third grade, it's going to start from the very beginning so that we can take this time, this time where we want to get back, get back to the heart of worship. So I'd love for you to stand and join with us as we sing Heart of Worship. And keep in mind that these words come from a place where they knew that that was what was so important. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring something that's a word 
that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single Something happens when the people of God gather together and play out the praises of God in the presence of God. Back to the heart of worship. Stripping everything away. So as we sing, when we're in this building together or when we're with our families in our living rooms right now singing, as we do that, it isn't about how much we like the song that we're singing. It's not about how much the style of the song and how important that is. It's about the words that we are singing. In Matthew chapter 18, it says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. Now I'm going to tell you, that verse is actually pulled a little out of context. That verse is actually talking about church discipline and the fact that we're all gathered together and that we should be of like mind when it comes to that. But I think the principle of that verse applies very much to the fact that we are gathered together and God is with us. Because when we are here, either via the internet or in this room together, when that time comes, God is with us. The Holy Spirit is in us and God is with us. In Hebrews chapter 12, it goes on and it says, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. With reverence and awe. Remember that very first sermon that we talked about in worship and what God is worth is our awe in all either 
all of us or all of us in reverence and in awe. In Psalm 63, 4, it goes on and it says, So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. And you know, when it comes to worship, there are many different forms that worship can take. Lifting up hands is one of those things. And there are some people that kind of struggle with that a little bit. And that lifting of hands while singing may make a a different statement or bringing attention to yourself. But remember what I said, even though worship, corporate worship, we're all together, there is still a part of it that is a part of our own heart worship and how we can worship God. I got a short little video that I'm really hoping comes through uh, that I want you to watch right now. It's kind of humorous about our lifting of hands. Check it out. And I know that each church has its own worship style, you know, which is cool. Some people are more expressive in worship, some people more subtle, and it's all good. Um, I go to a church that's pretty expressive in worship. It's, um, it's a hand-raising church. That's what it is, right? That's what, you know. Anybody here go to a hand-raising church? Anybody here? Sweet. Who here does not go to a hand-raising church? <laughs> some of you are trying. You're like, I can't. I want to, to, I need to get some momentum. (laughs) Totally cool. But hey, if you're not used to going to a hand-raising church, you want to go and join us, feel free to join us, but don't feel like you got to join right in, okay? Start slow. we got a lot of different hand raises that we use. We actually have names for our hand raises. So I'm going to walk you through real quick, okay, what they are, just to let you know. Say you're at my church, music is rocking, start slow, hands in the pockets, little elbow flap, you're fine. Very subtle. Get warmed up. Get your heart rate up. When you're warmed up, start with the first one. Ready? Carry the TV. Carry the TV. That's our first one. Very subtle. Go to big screen. Big screen, a little wider. Next one's my fish was this big. My fish was this big. If you're a liar, you can go out there. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Jesus loves you. Grace. Next one's hold my baby. Hold my baby. Got dueling light bulbs. That's our next one, dueling light bulbs. We got goalpost. Everybody knows goalpost. Throwing a heartburn. A lot of people like to do heartburn. Double heartburn, right back to goalpost. What's my favorite? Mufasa. Mufasa, that's my favorite. The circle of life. Tim, can you go higher? Yes, you can. You can take one hand, go a bunch of different stuff. Pointer, hatchet, schoolroom. <laughs> Release the doves, give the Lord a high five. Press it out. A lot of women like to wash the window. Wash the window. <laughs> and when you're comfortable there, go for the big three. Village people, Rocky, touchdown. There you go. There's your big three. All right. That is a funny way to bring to us to bring to the surface something that is important. When we worship, it is as a corporate thing, but it's also from our heart. And if raising your hands is a way for you to show what God is worth, your reverence and awe to God, then please feel free to raise your hands. For people that like to raise your hands, don't look at the person next to you and worry about the fact that they aren't. Don't raise your hands so that everyone can see that you're worshiping God. It's got to be something that's from the heart. And for those that don't raise your hands, don't look at the people who are raising their hands and say, well, they're just trying to be a show because that's not what it's about. In Psalm 141.2, it says, let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Many times in scripture, it talks about raising our hands in reverence and in awe to show God's worth. So raising hands is okay. It needs to be something that comes from our heart. And you know what? The style of worship. The style of worship cannot be what dictates whether you can worship God or not. Some of us like hymns, and they enjoy the hymns. And that's a beautiful thing, and I'm glad that you enjoy the hymns. And we sing some hymns. Some of us like the the more uh, upbeat worship choruses. 
And those can be a great form of worship. You know, my wife and I and my daughter, we watched a movie last night. It's a great movie called Breaking Through, if you've never seen it. Um, it's been out there for a little while, but it, it ta- it's a true story about a young man who falls through the ice and, and uh, miraculously lives. And cre- whoops, spoiler alert. Um, probably shouldn't have told you that. Um, but it's a great movie. You should watch it anyways. Uh, but in that movie, there's a church service, and they're singing... Um, Amazing Grace, not the, the hymn, but the, this is Amazing Grace, that song. Okay, I just sang, and I don't do that very often, and I, you understand why. Okay, but they're singing, this is Amazing Grace, and as they're singing it, there's a guy up there that's kind of doing some rap stuff with it, and then at one point, he breaks out into full rap on the song, and the main character, the mom in the movie, is just appalled at this and that it shouldn't happen. Guess what? That is, that is worship. And it is a part of worship. There's some really good Christian rap songs out there. And you can worship with rap music. I know that some of you are right now at home going like this. No, you can't. And I'm telling you, yes, you can worship with rap music. It's about your heart towards God. And yes, there are some ways that makes it a little easier for you, but there's some ways that makes it a little easier for others. And we have to be open to share that. One of the great lines in that movie is when she comes up to the pastor and says, I did not like that. That was not good. That rap music was not good. And he says, I will do anything I can to make the younger generation understand what worship of God is and how cool it is to worship God. And we need to think about that. This church is blessed. It is so blessed to have extremely different age demographics in it. And I praise the Lord for that. But we need to make sure that we are not leaving the younger generation behind in how we worship and when we worship. And so as we worship, understand that style and preference, that's all about what feels good to you. It's not about what makes God's worth available. It's what we need to do is to understand that no matter what we're singing, whether it be a hymn or whether it be a more contemporary worship chorus, it's our heart towards God. So we're going to stand now and sing some more. And so join us as we sing, Be Thou My Vision.
Last week, we talked about giving being a time of personal worship, and that it is. It is definitely a time of personal worship. It's a time for us to be able to show our worth to God, but we do it in a setting of corporate worship, just to give you that opportunity on that that regular basis to give, and that's why we do it in a corporate setting, but giving is a part of of our worship. And we're going to sing a song coming up right now as part of our time of worship and give the opportunity to give. And, you know, we sent out an email this last week, and hopefully you got it, where there's so many different ways that you can give and worship God and show his worth in your giving uh, by either going online 
uh, and, and to our website and, and clicking the donate button, or you can do it through bill pay through the bank, or you can mail a check in, or in right out here in our lobby, we have a little box where you can come. It's a lock box that you can drop your giving, and you can still stay six feet away from everybody. So you stay within the social distancing and all that. So it's important that we understand that that giving isn't about obligation. It's not about making and meeting and paying the bills. It's about our worship of God and giving God the worth that he deserves. And so as we sing this song, this will be our chance for giving. But I want to talk a little bit about the song because it's a song that has actually caused some, uh, I'll say, some consternation in people's minds about singing it. And so it kind of gets a bad rap in some places. And this, is, this points to what I think is what we've been talking about is it's not about preference. It's about what we're singing to God and the words and what they actually mean. And the song that we're going to sing is Reckless Love. And some people get really upset that we assign the word reckless to God's love. But I want to read these these verses to you, and then explain what this really means. Luke 15, verses 3 through 7. So he told them in this parable, what, a man, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he is found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over the one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. You have to understand this word reckless, the reckless love that's being sung about here. It's not God's love towards us. It's our understanding of God's love towards us. That's the word reckless. To us as humans, we can't understand why would he care so much about me when there's so many other people to be worried about. That is where that word reckless comes from. It's this love that is so crazy, so hard to understand, so unbelievable, so unfathomable that in our own minds, it's reckless love. So don't let this word knock you out of worshiping God and showing what God's worth is. And so we're going to pray for our giving. But then as we sing this song, listen to all the words and understand the power Understand the overwhelming love that God has for us. Join me in prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for giving your son and sacrificing Jesus on the cross for us. Thank you for caring so much more about the one that you leave the 99. God, right now, Right now, we want to show you your worth. We want to worship you with our giving. Because God, you are worth more than anything we have. Lord, thank you so much for loving us. For loving us so deeply that, that from a human point of view, it seems reckless. But it's a love that is so deep and so overwhelming that it overcomes everything, including, including fear of what's going on in our country right now. God, we just pray for our country. We pray for its economy. We pray for the, the, the feeling that this, this isolation is causing in some people, Lord. We just pray that that they would feel your reckless love, that they would feel the overwhelming power of it. That they would feel your presence, God, in their lives, not just as we gather together here today and in our rooms where we're at, but throughout this week, Lord. I pray for the leaders of this country. I pray that they will be moved by you to make decisions that put us in a situation where we can come through the other side of this 
and reach those that need you. We love you, Lord. And we're going to give back to you right now. We're going to give to you with a cheerful heart because that's what you say you want from us. We are going to show you your worth because of your reckless love. It is in your son's precious and holy name, the name of Jesus, that we pray these things. Amen. Go ahead and stand with us at home and join us as we sing about God's reckless love towards us. No 
won't shadow, you won't light up Mountain, you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Reckless love of God. God is worth our worship. Anyone who can love us that deeply, care about us so much that he would send his son to be our savior. That is a God who is worth it. That is a God who deserves our worship. Personal worship and our corporate worship. Gathering together. This gathering together kind of took on a whole different approach and a whole different meaning from the point where Jesus Christ came and gave his life on the cross for us. The gathering used to be so that people could come and offer their sacrifices at that time for their sins, where they would offer up the spotless lamb to be butchered and sacrificed to God as a way to show his worth. Well, because Christ came and gave his life, and gave the ultimate sacrifice, the final sacrifice necessary for our salvation. Corporate worship has taken on a different purpose and a different meaning, and it's what we've been talking about. The worship, the songs that we've been singing have all been about bringing us into the presence of God so that we can hear what God wants to say to us. It's a two-way relationship with God. And this corporate gathering is about learning what God wants for us. You know, last week we talked about the fact that we read in, in the letter that Paul wrote to the people living in Rome about the fact that we are to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Truly finding out and understanding and knowing who God is. Because the only way we can show God his worth is by knowing who God is. In Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So when we come together in our corporate worship, the singing is a big part of the worship, but it's also about the teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom hearing from God through his word, whether it be from someone standing here preaching to you or or whether it be in our community groups that take place before our worship service when we can all come together. Listening and hearing from God through his word, through people who are sharing God's word with us, teaching and admonishing. That word admonishing, if you look it up in our uh, English dictionary, it talks about urging or warning. If you actually look at the Greek word that's used right there, it says to advise someone concerning the dangerous consequences of some happening or action. We are to help hold each other up, lift each other up, hold each other accountable, help each other understand with, hey, maybe we're not going quite the right way here, putting each other back on track, helping each other Follow God, know God, and show God his worth. That's what corporate worship is about. The teaching and admonishing one another in wisdom. In 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it says, What then, brothers? When you come together, each one has a hymn, 
a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for the building up. Let all things be done for the building up. We all have different gifts. And when we come together in this corporate setting, all those different gifts come out. You know, we were supposed to start uniquely wired back on March 15th. Well, this virus has put that kind of on hold. Well, when we get back together and we're allowed to come back together and get into this corporate setting here in this building, that uniquely wired class will be there and it will be open. I urge you to take it. Find out what your spiritual gift is. The Holy Spirit has gifted you. Find out what that gift is so that we can lift each other up in our corporate worship. And we can show God what He's worth together. Understanding that each one of us, with each one of our different gifts, allow that to be so much sweeter and so much more beautiful to God because we are lifting up the body. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And ball, the more you see the day drawing near. You understand, we are not neglecting to meet together, even now. We have come together through this live stream. We have come together in our homes, through the comments that get made on Facebook. So even, even though we can't join in this building, in this room, we can still show what God is worth. And so, as we close out this series on worship, I want you to really think in your mind, really dig deep in your heart, what is God worth to you? How do you show God his worth to you? Do you spend time in his word? Are you giving? Are you serving? You know, as we get together for these sermons and and we hear and we understand and we get to know God that much better, there are other ways that we can gather too. And we're going to start this and this is going to happen. This is going to happen in the fall. We're going to start a true small groups ministry. I know some of you do it now and and have supper clubs and and get together in small groups and thank you and praise the Lord for that. But we're going to be very intentional about starting a small group ministry that's going to happen and it's going to happen in September. So be looking for that as we go. And it's not going to be that everybody who runs it has to be these great theologians. It's going to be about coming together in communities to help build each other up to admonish one another together, learning scripture together. And you got an email this last week, and I want to just tell you about it. And if you didn't get it, please ask the office to send you another invitation. And it's for a, prod, or a platform called Right Now Media. This Right Now Media, I've gotten tons of emails from people who have said how much they appreciate it and how awesome it is that they've enjoyed going in and seeing all the different things that you can do on your own Bible studies that you can go through on your own, and you have to be discerning what you're picking and what you're looking at. Make sure that it falls in line with what we teach here, and and many, many of them on Right Now Media do. There's tons of things on there for kids that you can help your kids worship God using all of the different things that are there for kids. So I challenge you, instead of of putting them on Netflix or on, on Disney Channel, put the Right Now Media app right on your smart television or on your tablet. And use that right now, media. It is a great resource. And because you are a part of this church, it's free to you. So use it. And we will definitely be using it when we get together in small groups. But it's a way for us to know God, to know who he is, and to know what he is worth to you. What is God worth to you? Is his worth, are you showing it to him in worship? in a way that he understands how amazing, how awesome, how unfathomable, how reckless his love is to us, and we see it and know it and are thankful for it. Our last song that we're going to sing 
has these words. You know them well, I'm sure. If you've been coming to church at all, you've heard this song. But it's a little different take on it, but it's a beautiful song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Please stand and sing the new doxology with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let earth and heaven be saints proclaim. Father God, we thank you for this time that we've had of worship. We thank you for the time that we've been able to connect with you and, and once again um, realize the depth of the love that you have for us. Father, we thank you for your presence being with us, that your right hand will lead us and your, and your powerful right hand will hold us as we go through these different trials and, and tests and, and uh, different things going on in our lives. Lord. We just want to thank you for being there for us in the way that you care for us. Father, we ask that you would bless this upcoming week, that you would go before us to lead us and go beside us 
to strengthen us and above us, to protect us. We pray all this in the strong name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you, and we'll see you again next week. Let's sing praise God. Praise God.